Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap where I'm bringing three stories to you this week. One about birds that hide their eggs from snakes around their nest. Another one about Hubert, um, a great story about a, a falcon in Victoria that's been released after it was injured. Um, and the last one, a sad story about um, birds hitting windows. Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap, which I'm bringing this week to you this week from the Malonglo Gorge. Hopefully you'll be able to hear some bird sounds in the background. It's been a great morning for bird watching here um, at the gorge. My first story this week um, is about birds that build nests so that snakes and other predators can't find the eggs when they come along and try and look uh, for the eggs in a woven nest. There's quite a number of bird species around the world and the pendulum tit in the UK is one. Um, the, there's various species of uh, warblers in Australia that do it as well, where they build a domed nest with a side entrance. And in the side entrance, the birds go in and out and they can lay the eggs inside a protected dome nest. And then they'll build a second entrance to a blind chamber in the nest. Now, sometimes the blind chamber is to fool cuckoos, so the cuckoos are laying the eggs in the wrong spot or it's to fool snakes or lizards that come and try and put their heads in and find, find the eggs. There are amazing different designs that are used by different species of birds to, to fool reptiles um, and cuckoos in terms of where the eggs really are. Um, and um, and on, on the clip, you'll be able to see uh, some drawings of some of, these, some of these different sorts of designs. It's an extremely interesting evolutionary thing that some birds can do to protect their young. My second story this week is a really lovely story. It's about Hubert. Hubert is a Eurasian hobby. Now, hobbies are a small species of uh, hawk or eagle. Um, they're a type of falcon, um, and they are related to birds like um, peregrines and kestrels, etc. So this hobby, small bird, um, the Eurasian hobby found right across northern, uh, uh, the northern hemisphere from Europe right across to Asia, they migrate down into various parts of the Southern Hemisphere, not recorded in Australia. But in recent years, there's been a couple of Eurasian hobbies have turned up in Perth, clearly been confused with, on their migration routes and ended up on the wrong continent. And hopefully, you know, migrated back to China or wherever they, wherever they normally go. In the last year, there was a hobby turned up in a, in a country town in Victoria, in Sale, famous for other things, a running, great running race there. But... Um, Sale had this bird turn up in a paddock. Sadly, it had been injured. It uh, broke some bones in its wing, um, but it was recognized for what it was and spent several months in rehabilitation uh, and was given the name Hubert. Uh, and the really lovely story is Hubert has been completely, um, uh, his, the bones have all been completely repaired. He's been completely fit now for travel. Um, but this bird is not just being released to live around, you know, in the, in the countryside around Sale. This bird with its new wings is going to have to work out how to migrate all the way back to China. So hopefully Hubert um, from Sale, Victoria will find his way all the way back to China or southern Russia or wherever, he, wherever he's from uh, on his migration route at the end of this, um, during this next autumn period. So a lovely story about Hubert and well done to the guys who found the bird, recognized what he was, and then did all the rehabilitation that was necessary to get him back in the air. Congratulations to all those folk in, in sale that did that work. My last story today is about birds hitting windows. Now this is a sad phenomenon that many people have experienced. I've experienced it in my garden. I'll go out, um, I'll find a dead kingfisher or a dead bronze cuckoo at the base of a window where it's clearly hit the window thinking it can fly through the window either into the reflected bush that it can see or through to another window and out to the bush on the other side. Um, I read just recently that there's this a, a, a statistic which just absolutely baffled me. In the United States, it's, it's thought that up to a billion birds a year, that's a billion birds a year, hit windows um, right across the United States. When you have that sort of carnage in birds, people then ask questions, well, what can you do about it? And of course, you, there are some things we can do. If you have a window that's often hit, clearly, you know, putting up an awning during the day, uh, putting up shutters during the day um, can have, a, can have an, an effect. The other thing we're discovering is that there's, there's an effect where birds, if they see vertical or horizontal lines, will react differently to a window. Horizontal lines apparently don't work nearly as well as vertical lines. So if you put fine vertical lines with tape or something down a window, 
that can affect the bird's perception of the fact that it can fly through. It's critical that the, the lines are a certain distance apart. Too wide and the birds think they can fly through them and the colour of the lines can matter. And I was reading some fascinating research that's being done in the United States where they're looking at putting um, lines into the glass that actually gets installed in buildings and lines that are invisible to the human eye. So in fact, uh, the birds will be able to see the, the pattern, the grid pattern on the glass, but the human eye won't be able to see it. So that's an interesting thing and ho hopefully that research will lead to some more successful and cheaper options in terms of replacing glass in windows. Of course, the other thing to remember too is that not all birds that hit windows die. Often they'll hit the window and just be stunned. And they may be stunned for a, a, a few minutes or for an hour or two. If they haven't been injured, the best thing you can do is pick up a stunned bird, um, put it into a, a, a quiet place, into a box where it's kept in the dark. I've done this a number of times. And then you open the box an hour later and the bird just flies out after it's over the shock of hitting the window. So if it hasn't been injured, and it's hard to tell when you first find it, just pop it in a box anyway, open the box a little later, see if it comes out. Sometimes that's successful, you've protected it from being uh, taken by a predator when it was lying prone on the ground. Uh, and you can save the bird's life just by keeping it protected for a short time. So there's a number of things you can do when you find uh, this problem, but it is a serious problem. And we do need to look at carefully in terms of designing our houses and gardens to try and reduce the mortality that's occurred occurs to uh, birds hitting windows. That's all I have for my wrap uh, this week. Great story about Hubert. I hope he's got his way back to, to China. Um, and uh, if you've enjoyed these stories, check out the other stories on my on my YouTube channel. Uh, check out the other material on my, on my website. And don't forget to check out the tours that I'm doing uh, later in the year. Um, albatross watching tours, planes wanderer tours, uh, honey eater watching tours, and my regular bird walk, walking tours in Canberra. Check out the dates and the details on the website for those. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, happy birding.